Okay, Stephen Key here, and today I have a special guest. I always say that, but this one's really special because this gentleman is a patent attorney, but he's a patent attorney from where? Australia, <laughs> all, all the way, all the way on the other side of the world. <laughs> so, and the reason why Anthony is on today is that we're going to tie into a story of of, of someone that I know that came up with a great invention, licensed the invention to a company, collected her first check. Connie, we'll do a link so people can see it. We'll cut that in. But it wasn't easy for Connie, was it, Anthony? Because she went through a lot of attorneys and she had some problems. Then she found you. What was the problems? Connie had a few problems with her specification when, when it was drafted. And she, she had these lovely drawings in it. And the, the drawings really described her invention, but the patent attorney she took it to really described her, her invention poorly and didn't describe all the features. Okay. And particularly the key features that really drove her story. And, and it, particularly if you look at Connie's invention and, and you hear Connie talk, she had a few problems like she she saw a problem and then she saw the solution and, and my job as a patent attorney is to really eke out that that solution and reduce it to a bunch of features that you can actually claim and to differentiate that from the marketplace and the previous patent attorney did a really poor job of it and, and also when he first got the exam report um because in australia you can request an examination on the provisional he he, um, he just gave up. He told Connie that it was a useless case. Um, and <laughs> Connie, Connie was really upset at the time and she contacted us and I, she said, well, what can you do that's different from, from them? And I said, well, send over this, send over the exam report and send over your specification. We'll have a look and we won't charge you. We'll just have a look. And um, yeah, and we, we could fix it. So um, it, we worked really hard and we fixed it. And, and also the interesting thing was that the, the licensor that she was talking to really had an interest in getting a granted patent at the end of the day, which is quite different to a lot of licenses that we've done. And, and this really drove us to try and get this through the patent office as quick as possible, which is something that, that usually goes against what I, I usually preach. I usually preach that we go slow as possible. Now, wait a minute. It, you go slow because that's what I say too. Go slow. But... Absolutely. Um, and the reason being is because if you've got a pending application, that pending application is probably more valuable than the granted application. Okay. Because I can sit, I can go and buy an infringing product that might be on the market, sit that on my desk and reverse engineer the claims. Okay. So I can sit there with the infringing product, just slap bang on my desk and I can look at the features and pull the features out and match that with your specification. And, and that's how you really, particularly in the US, this is really important. And in Australia, we can do the same thing. Um, Europe, it's less so that you get away with this sort of stuff. But in Australia, you can definitely do it. And the USA, you can definitely do okay. it. So and, let's talk about what's important when you're working with a patent attorney. Because, and I think you hit upon it. When I come up with an idea, I would show my patent attorney, first I'd file a provisional patent application, and maybe I'm talking to him even then. But I want to show what's important, why I'm selling it. Why is someone going to license it from me? I'm showing them the sell of the idea. How important is that in your opinion? Okay. The, the main thing, is, uh, any patent attorney can put a written description of your product in, right? The thing that sells it or the thing that differentiates it from the marketplace is the story. So it's really important when, if you look at a patent specification, it's got a couple of key components. And one of the key components is the background because the background gives you a free opportunity to tell the examiner i know all of this and my invention's better than this because right and and you don't even have to it doesn't cost you anything to do that so you just put it in um and, and also if your patent attorney has a really good understanding of, of what it is that the secret source so to speak um when you're talking to an examiner you can really ram those, drive those points home with, with the okay. examiner because they love the story, mm. right? Um, and, and that's what I usually sell, sell examiners on the story. I love that. And okay. don't worry about the, it, like the features give rise to that story. It's, but it's okay. the story that solves them at the end of the day. Um, yep. I, I've, got, I've got another invention where we're doing exactly just that. And, and they've got a really neat story about how their invention works. 
Um, and all these examiners around the world are all rejecting it, going, oh, well, this is obvious, because you've got two key requirements. You've got novelty and obviousness. And they reject it because it's obvious. But the, the thing is, at the end of the day, when I start to tell them the story about how the inventors came up with this, and the fact that they saw a problem with the prior art, and that theirs is the only solution to that problem. Uh, the, the, how, how, do you the argue, how do you argue that then? It's pretty hard to argue that fact that you just said. Uh, it, it's, it's not impossible because um, the, the thing is, a, a lot of the times you use the background as your leverage point. Okay. So you talk about the background and say, look, the, these are really nice inventions that have gone on before and they worked really well, but they all had an innate problem. Um, and, and Connie's invention, if you look at that, the, okay. the, the background was having a hard brush to, to brush the side of your pool. All right. um, that has a really nasty problem in the fact that, A, it doesn't, doesn't work very well, and B, it does scratch the inside of your pool. Got it. Okay. Hey, Anthony, and, tell and, me, um, working with your patent attorney, I'm always telling everybody, how do you know if he's inventor friendly? How do you know that? Look, I, I think developing a relationship with your, with your patent attorney is probably easy, the easiest thing. Like, you know, go in there, meet them, talk to them. And if you don't like them, go somewhere else. Um, you know, the, the, you, you've got to really, um, they've got to really understand your invention because they are your representative. Okay. And, and in front of the patent office or or even um, if they're going through agents and that sort of thing worldwide, they are your representative and they should be on your side. If, they, if you feel that they're not on your side, go find someone else. Right. Um, it, you know, and make sure that they're really pushing what your invention is. We had another inventor that came in from a, a different attorney firm who had a, a, it was a software process slash hardware device that was for, for connecting a home up. And his, his invention was, was really badly drafted by a patent attorney. It had 350 claims on it. Um, and the, none of them were novel or inventive as far as I could tell. Okay. Um, and I invited the inventor in and I said, look, we honestly, we can't work out what your invention is from this. And the reason, because we took it on after he'd gone to what's called national phase, which is the country level. And we we're arguing it in front of the country level examiners. And we couldn't argue that based on the specifications because it's so okay. badly worded. And um, it, we, we talked to the inventor, interviewed him, and suddenly realized that what he wanted to protect was one thing out of the whole specification. The specification went for about three or 400 pages in total, and he only wanted to protect one thing. So we redrafted the 10 okay. claims and processed those 10 claims, which was a lot, lot cheaper for him. Tell me this, Anthony. Um... Building a relationship, right? Making that connection, you said. Making sure that that patent attorney understands it, tells can tell a story, can represent it correctly. How important is having any type of manufacturing knowledge? Is that important at all, in your opinion? Uh, look, having um, the inventor doesn't need to have manufacturing knowledge, um, but you need to know the boundaries of, of what your what your knowledge base is. If you don't know it, go get someone who does know it, right? Um, and, and like we, re we constantly refer people on to industrial designers. We've got a team of industrial designers. They don't work in house for us, but we refer, refer them out. And, and we've, got about, we've got about three or four teams that we work with. Um, and we, we let the inventor choose whichever one they like. Um, it doesn't matter to us which one they choose. They're all pretty good at the ones we've got. Um, and they will take your product and move it that step further down the path to get it a bit more manufacturable because there is a massive leap between having the basic idea and having something that's manufacturable. Okay. Um, it, you know, and I, I, I've seen a lot of people come in and go, oh, I've got this brilliant idea. I've got CAD drawings. I've got it all. I've, it's all ready to go. And they bring it in and we go, hey, look, we'll file a provisional because the reason is with the provisional is that we can update it over the course of 12 months. Sure. And tell them that, and it gives them a bit of design freedom. And uh, we we send them off to industrial designers. They come back and go, oh yeah, I forgot this part and this part and this part and this part. And, and it can be as simple as changing the, like, sure. like if you've got a square box, it could be as simple as changing the walls so that they're a millimeter in so it falls out of the mold and things like this, which 
Most inventors don't know. Yeah, I see so many, I believe why there's so many patents out there that are basically worthless is that, you know, how do you make them? They're just a concept. And so I think that knowledge, and if you don't have it, go get it. I like that you said that. Okay, so how important is to think beyond that it's, you're going to get a patent, but let's say the competition is going to come in. Is there a time to think about workarounds maybe or variations? Is it, should you think about that early or later? What's your opinion? Um, I think constantly, actually. Um, it, you should have a, 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 when you start out, you need a firm grasp of what's gone on before, okay? And that gets back to, when we draft a specification with someone, we, we do a, a basic keyword search on Google Patents for a start, just to, so we know where your invention lies in the whole field. And we encourage inventors to go off and do that too, which means that they sort of know where they sit in the whole field. Okay. And, 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 and that gives you some sort of, oh, well, I sit in this space. And then as we're watching, about the 18 month mark is where you start seeing copies come out. So if you're successful, mm -hmm. you're gonna start seeing knockoff products about the 18 month to about 30 month stage, which sort of puts you, if you're going on a normal sort of pattern, sort of timeline, um, it, you file a provisional, gives you 12 months, and then you, you might file a PCT application, and that lasts another 18 months. So you're somewhere in between the PCT and going into the countries. All right. uh, and, and that's usually when the, the knockoff products come about. Okay. If, you, if you're dealing with a household widget or, um, you know, some type of consumer product, it, right. it, if it's software, it's much quicker. Okay. If it's a medical or pharmaceutical, it's much slower. I think your advice is spot on. <laughs> Thank you. And I really <laughs> like it. You must be reading my books. <laughs> I, 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 I did read your book. And, 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 and what I loved about it was the fact that it, it is exactly what I've been telling my clients all the way along, um, particularly with licensing. And, okay. and I think the, the most important message in the whole thing is do your homework, mm. right? Uh, there is no substitute for hard work. Uh, okay. it, you know, you really need to, uh, I, I think in your book, you talk about making a business plan. And, and that, that's one of the key things. Make sure you know who you're selling to and who you're competing against. Um, and and uh, the amount of people that we see on a routine basis that have never thought of that question, and um, you know, and and we generally point that like we we can draft your patents for you and do your legal agreements for you, but at the end of the day, if you want your business to be a success, you have to do your homework. <laughs> yeah, my patent attorneys gave me great advice over 20 years ago. They said, Steve, you know, protection is fairly easy. We can handle that for you. Selling is a little harder, so why don't you go out there and make sure you're asking the right questions and be prepared to sell, because if you don't sell it, it doesn't mean anything. So um, we're going to put some information down below because we have a lot of students down under and they need to find you because I think your advice is spot on. Thank you very much for doing such a wonderful job with Connie. She's so happy. She's collecting checks. She had a problem, you fixed it, you're inventor friendly. Um, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. I, I, I love the feedback as well. Um, we've got so much feedback for, from um, Connie's video. Um, and, and look, I'm, I'm always happy to talk to people. So uh, yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I really enjoyed it. No, thank you, Anthony.